A concerning report has been released detailing how half the world will be overweight or obese in the next 12 years. The report suggests personal choices and behaviours are not the cause, but that the last 40 years of preventative measures have obviously failed. Joining us with more analysis live now is Iverson Health Research Institute Professor John Dixon. Professor Dixon, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Firstly, just explain for us how big a problem this is here in Australia. What proportion of Australians are overweight or obese and is this becoming more and more common? Yes, it's becoming more common right across Australia. Uh, back in 1980, uh, there were about 8% obese and now it's about, of adults obese, and now it's 31%. And, and the line has just gone up and up over the uh, uh, over those 40 years. So uh, we're, we're in trouble uh, and all of the behaviours and, and public health messaging that we've used has clearly not worked. And it's not worked in any country. Uh, and so we need to rethink, reframe how we approach people living with obesity. Uh, we need to think about uh, the causes which are not uh, the person's fault, largely they're genetically primed for it and of course they live in our environment uh, and uh, we're not really controlling our environment terribly well. Uh, there are numerous causes, there are numerous factors that lead to it and of course we, um, we struggle to have any effective treatments uh, available to the public at a reasonable cost. So John, just going back to what you just said, I think you said 31% of Australians are now yes. obese. Adults, what, yes. How do you define obesity in, in that context? How, what are we talking about here in terms of someone right. who's carrying a few extra kilos as opposed to being obese? Now, we, we define obesity from a population level as, as a body mass index greater than 30. And for, for, for women, that will be in the order of... Uh, 80 kilograms and for men uh, around 100 kilograms but it varies depending on height and so forth importantly we don't call if medically we don't call that uh, all of those with obesity some don't have problems with it it's when you've got excess weight or excess fat and you have associated uh, issues with that associated with they could be psychological, they could be medical, uh, they could be uh, they could be physical. Um, so there's so many common pro problems and diseases and risks associated with obesity uh, that it's a major driver of uh, uh, of disease in Australia: heart disease, diabetes, and cancers. And. Uh... I think those risks are pretty clearly um, signposted. I think most people are very aware that your risk of, of, of a range of health issues does go up the more weight you're carrying. So how do we change the public health messaging then? What would well, you like that to look like in terms of well, getting through to people? Yeah, no, we've got to get through to people. And, and one of the problems is that our typical approach to people living with obesity is to be judgmental about them. And we need to address weight stigma. There's now clear evidence, and it's coming out all the time, that in fact, stigmatising people who've got a weight problem actually makes them worse. It actually stresses them. It mean, it increases the risk of, of diseases associated with, with, with obesity. But it also uh, it makes it very psychologically damaging for low self-esteem, poor, poor net, you know, poor, poor um, well-being. Uh, and in fact, when you think about it, there's no self-help, there's no advocacy group saying, you know, those, those million very severely obese people living in Australia um, are not screaming out for, for better help and preventing their children from, from, from becoming obese. So we need to think about our messaging in the past and reframe the whole problem to being one of a, a serious chronic disease that we cannot cure. You mentioned children. When in life does this typically become a problem for most people? Is it the old middle age spread where things get off track or, or is it much earlier? For example, are we seeing more and more children having real problems with their weight? We are. We are, unfortunately. And the, the, the scene is set uh, before children largely get to kindergarten. The genetic and, and, and the early life programming occurs at that stage. Once, a, once a, a, an adolescent has a weight problem, they are likely to carry that, the most, most likely to carry it for life. And uh, when we think about it, um, the, the weight trajectory of someone, say, in their 16 or 18, 
is very different from what the population at 30. So there's a trajectory that goes up and people keep thinking, oh, I've, I've caused this problem myself, I'm eating the wrong things, I'm not exercising enough. But in fact, that trajectory has been set and we regulate our weight through our brain. We don't have absolute control over it. In fact, we have very little control over it uh, as we as as we um, uh, as we as as we 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 get as we think we've got control, we don't. And so, when you find that people lose weight, they actively lose weight, they tend to put it back on again. And very few people can keep significant weight off over over a long period of time without help. So, does that mean that a lot of the interventions? that are available aren't actually that useful in the long run. For example, um, for those with means, there are options in terms of surgery. We know there are a heap of drugs on the market that are effective in terms of thinning people down. How is the availability of those interventions actually impacting more broadly the, the pandemic of obesity? Sure. I mean, when we talk about diabetes or blood pressure, we, we find that, that most people are being treated. When we talk about obesity, uh, and clinically obesity, when people are really quite sick with it, almost no one is being treated. Uh, bariatric surgery, for instance, is very, very effective, but uh, there's uh, uh, about 2% of the population might seek help each year. And of the people who have private health insurance, 95% of, of, of people who have surgery are in the private health insurance or pay for themselves. Uh, Medicare pays for very, very little. When it comes to the PBS, the, 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 the drugs supported, uh, we have none. We have none on the PBS uh, that are available now as a weight mat for weight management. We never have. And that's a real problem because it means that our health services are not seeing this as a, as a problem for Australians. And we need to change that that very carefully. We need to, we have very few drugs. I, I, uh, we, uh, fortunately, we've got some on the, on, on, the, uh, on the horizon that are looking very, very good. And they may be able to change this epidemic to some extent, but we've got to actually engage with, uh, with, with implementing better treatment and having clinics and services that are available to people, but also the people who are suffering from this epidemic, the people suffering most, are the ones who desperately want it prevented. They want to protect their children and their relatives, and we need to use them and, and listen to them as to how we should go about changing our ways, changing the story, changing the narrative, so that we actually prevent effectively and treat effectively. Unfortunately, nowhere in the world has been able to prevent this expanding uh, pandemic.